So lately, it's been kind of tough finding free mowers to fix and flip, so the one you're looking at, I had to pay for, and luckily it wasn't very expensive. Not too bad it wasn't free, but for the price I paid for it, I'm still going to make quite a bit of money on it. But this one doesn't go quite as smoothly as my other projects, and now I think I might have to spend even more time and money on it than I want to. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Yard Machines lawnmower, and the problem is that it won't start despite what I was told about it. Of course, believing what a seller says versus seeing an action are two different stories, but I couldn't pass up on this deal mainly because of the price, and even if it turns out to be a pile of junk, the parts alone will be worth it. Now, I'm going to try and repair this lawnmower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. So first off, the reason why I even bought this mower was because in the pictures it looked to be in great condition. Of course, I did have to give it a good cleaning to make it look like this, but even before then, you could tell it wasn't in bad shape. Now the interesting part was that after taking a look around, according to the stickers on this engine, it's been around for well over 12 years. But it looks to have been used for only half that time, otherwise we're to believe that someone took really good care of it all those years. But if I had to guess, I'm betting that this mower was sitting in a shed for most of that time because I can't imagine that it would look like this after 12 seasons of use. The first thing that we need to do is of course check on the oil and see if we're going to have some engine issues. And according to the reading, not only is the oil dirty, but there's way too much in there as well. Now it's not ideal, but I'd rather take this than not having enough in there. Next, we're going to check on the contents of the fuel tank and see if we get some free gasoline, but what we find in there is not good either. So as you can see, there seems to be quite a lot of organic matter in the tank, which after some time could break down and make its way into the carb. That means we're going to have to clean out the tank the best we can and hope the screen does its job to protect the carb, but unfortunately, I wasn't hoping hard enough. So I'm going to let you know right now, this repair was a series of regrets, and I'll let you know what should have been done instead. So after using the shop vac to try and clean out the tank, I was able to get the larger pieces out of the tank. However, I didn't get it all. What I should have done was to take the tank off the mower and rinsed it out instead. Now doing it that way would have gotten out the rest of the debris because what's left in there could pose an issue for the carb. Now at this point, I was thinking that I was going to try and start the mower, but I'd forgotten to install the blade that I took off in the last video. Now with the fuel tank somewhat clean and with some fresh gasoline in it, hopefully it'll start. But if it doesn't start, we'll try and prime the carb manually and see how that goes. And as expected, it wasn't going to start for us. So this is where my chemical bottle of gasoline comes in. It's going to help us spray some gasoline into the carb and see if the carb might be the issue. Well, that was not the most confident start I've ever heard. However, it did at least try and start. Now more than likely, the carb is going to be the problem. However, on this style of carb that has an automatic choke, if the choke was the problem, then the engine would have stayed running and not stopped. But since the engine started and then stopped, it means it was running on the gasoline that we put into the carb, pointing to a clogged main jet. Or the other possibility is that whatever is inside the fuel bowl in the carb is not going to be gasoline, but perhaps water. So here comes regret number two. Instead of taking off the carb to do a full cleaning on it, I instead only decided to drop the bowl thinking I was going to save time, and man was I wrong. So after taking off the two small screws that holds the bowl to the carb, I'll then pry the bowl loose, revealing the reason why this engine didn't start. So as you can see, what you're looking at is not only a light green gasoline, but also what looks like water and something much worse. Now inside the bowl, we can see what looks like a gelatinous blob of something that was keeping any fuel from getting through the carb. So after pouring it out onto the table, we can get a better view of what this is. Now this is not normal, and if I had to guess what it is, I'd say this was old ethanol gasoline mixed with the gasoline that I put into the system. That means before we put it all back together, we'll have to make sure that all that stuff is out of the bowl, which wasn't that tough to do. Next we'll tackle clearing up the main jet, but something tells me that this won't be as easy as I was hoping for as well. So after lifting the float out of the way, we can then start the process of clearing the opening in the main jet, but it seems like that gel is also in there as well. So I think it'd be a better idea if we took the cartridge out, giving us a better chance to clean it. I know it's hard to tell, but this cartridge is also covered in that jelly as well, so this was definitely a good choice to make. 
Now to start off, we'll need to separate the two pieces of the cartridge and exposing these smaller holes in the middle. So at this point, you'll then need to identify all the tiny openings in both pieces and then proceed to clear them with whatever you have on hand. Now you don't need to know what each opening does, only that anything blocking it is interfering with what it's supposed to do and needs to be cleared. Now I'm using some wires from my carb cleaning kit, but it's not necessary. If you have an assortment of bread ties or copper wiring around, that should work too. Now using carb cleaner and possibly even some compressed air might be a great idea, however it's not needed. If you hadn't guessed, the main focus of the cleaning should be centered around making sure that the main jet opening is clear as possible. Also try and resist the urge to make it any bigger. Now if you make this opening too big, it might deliver too much fuel to the engine causing it to run poorly. Now I know these engines are jetted much too lean to try and keep emissions down, but at least it'll run the way it's supposed to from the factory. And adding too much fuel to get more performance will be a hit or miss situation, and more times than not, you're gonna miss, and the engine is gonna let you know about it too. Now once you get the openings in the cartridge as clean and clear as possible, put it back into the carb and replace the bowl. Just be very careful because with the carb still on the engine, it'll be harder to tell if the bowl is on crooked. And unfortunately, as you can tell, when I first installed it, the bowl was indeed crooked. And if left this way, will have some very unwanted effects on the carb. That means you'll have to take it back off and try it again. Also, before I installed the air filter base back on, I did give it a decent cleaning. That way I can keep track of how dirty the air filter is getting. Now, if the filter base is covered in dirt, it'll give me an idea of what the filter is dealing with, but if the base is still fairly clean, I can assume that the filter is not that bad either. Now, before I put the air filter back on, I'm going to put some fuel into the tank and see if the carb is going to leak. So this test could take seconds or minutes for it to happen, but after waiting for a couple of minutes, there was no leaking. However, later on, I did find out there was the slowest leak from the carb, but I'll talk more about that later in a different video. For right now, we're ready to move on. Now I do have some brand new air filters that I plan on using, but until I know this carb is not going to leak, I'm going to use a test filter. Now before I take this mower off the table, I'm going to take this opportunity to put a light lube on the wheels. Now even though this mower doesn't weigh that much and is easy to use, adding a light lube to the wheels will keep them from wearing out and getting all wobbly later on. Now these wheels were already easy to spin, so I'm going to just spray some lube on the front and the back of the wheels. Of course, if your wheels are really bad, then I would take the wheels off first and clean the axles and then add your lube. But then again, it is your project, so do what you feel works best for you. Now what type of lube you use is again your choice. I just like using something light because it's easier to spray in tight areas. So that was a very interesting startup. If you hadn't guessed it, that poor startup was probably a result of me not taking the carb off for a proper cleaning. We'll talk more about that, but before we go on, I do want to see if it'll start back up while the engine is still hot. So the engine started back up while hot with no issues, which means more than likely the valve lash is probably close to where it needs to be, but we might still check it later on just in case. Now I do want to take a look at the choke flap just to make sure it's not stuck, but I don't think that's the case. Instead, I think there's still some sort of a blockage in the carb that's keeping the fuel flow from being where it needs to be at startup. 
This is then keeping the engine speed slow until there's enough vacuum to help overcome the blockage, but that's only a guess. So how did this project turn out then? Well, if I had to grade it, it would be a passing grade, but not by much. The reason being is that even though there were no parts needed for this project, the shortcuts I've made have now come back to haunt me. So come to find out, I did have a very slow fuel leak that was caused by the debris in the tank, which would have been fixed if I took the time to clean it properly. The same goes for the carb. If I had taken the time to take it off and clean it the right way, I wouldn't have this slow startup issue either. So as you might have guessed, this mower will not be sold until I can get all these problems fixed. Now all the mistakes that I made were because I thought this was going to be a simple clogged main jet problem, but it turned out to be something much worse. That's when I should have changed gears and should have realized that a simple fix wasn't in the cards for this one. So my question is, what do you think I need to do to fix it? Take the carb off for a full cleaning or just buy a new carb instead? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.